On this episode of Backtrack, we're taking a deep dive into the history of Crossville Dragway, located in Crossville, Tennessee. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I love drag racing history, and that goes for the cars, the people, and the racetracks. And I'm starting this new series called Backtrack, which is going to give me the opportunity to tell you the history of drag strips. I actually wrote a book called Lost Drag Strip several years ago, but this YouTube channel gives me a way to tell that story in different ways. Before I get too carried away, I'd like to invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and feel free to drop a comment down below, especially if you have a memory from Crossville Dragway. I'd love to hear about it. So to give you the full history on this track, we've got to go back to about 1977, and that's when Gary Rogers and Gary Emery put together a plan to utilize a piece of property they'd bought and build a drag strip on it. Originally, this track was known as Crossville Drag Strip, a really simple name, and they had J. Paul Smith come in and do the excavation work. Once he got it all flat and smooth, he came back and did all the asphalt for the track and the return road, but they left the pits just to gravel and as it turned out on the first race it was actually more like mud because they had gotten a lot of rain in the weeks before and it was actually snowing a little bit on the opening day. One thing that separates this track from other local drag strips is that it was built from day one as an eighth mile track. A lot of the other tracks like Brainerd and Paradise Drag Strip and a lot of the others they started as quarter mile drag strips but were shortened because of safety reasons and because of insurance reasons and all the local racers were setting their cars up for the eighth mile so it made sense to make it an eighth. So all of that construction in 1977 kind of bled over into 1978 and they were met with some pretty poor weather. That didn't change the fact that they had a big race coming up. They had already booked everything with the IHRA and they wanted to have the ultimate grand opening. So they kicked things off at this track with an IHRA points race. That was on April 22nd and 23rd in 1978, and it was really the, the track's first race. You know, I'm sure that they had a little bit of testing here and there, but otherwise this track was fresh and brand new for that giant IHRA points race. I mean, it was a big deal to have the big guys come to town. We've got a lot of great pictures from that inaugural race. The cool thing about it to me is that my dad raced in that first race. He was racing his Henry J, which was called Dr. Feelgood, and he had it set up for one of the gas classes. I think he ran in the C category, C gas. And he had signed up for this first race. Basically, all the local guys signed up for it because it was a big deal. You know, you had guys coming in from way out of town, and it was kind of like a big honor to be able to line up against these big names. And I just love this picture of my dad sitting up on the quarter panel of his Henry J with his feet kind of propped up on the tire that's sticking out from the quarter. And that's his buddy Ronnie McGee standing there with him. And, you know, they're just hanging out, I guess, in between rounds or, you know, you kill a lot of time at the drag strip. So this is just one of those candid pictures that was taken during some downtime. But in the background, you can see tons of race cars and they're not in any kind of order. I mean, you can just, they're just scattered everywhere. And that's one of my dad's memories of this first race was that there were so many cars there. And at the time, there just wasn't hardly enough room for everybody to get in. It wasn't terribly long after that first big race that Gary Rogers and Gary Emery sold the property, and they sold it to James Baisley, and he ran the track for a few years. James continued the weekly bracket racing program. He actually developed a really good motorcycle racing program, and my dad switched from racing cars into drag racing motorcycles. He started with a Honda CB350, which was not very fast, really small motor, but it was very successful because it was so consistent. We've got lots of pictures of his drag racing days. He used to drag race with Bill Sims and Randy Everett. They'd drive over from Dayton every single weekend to go racing. So moving on to 1982, James Baisley sold the track to Spike Hedgecoff. And at this time, the track didn't stay open for very long. It actually was vacant for a few years, and you know that really is discouraging for local racers. Uh, when your home track closes down, I mean that honestly is one of the things that caused my dad to stop racing, and it caused a lot of people to stop racing because they didn't have a local track to go to. So you know the future of this track didn't look very good until Bob Clark came into the picture. He came in and he cleaned the place up, and he started putting some money into it, and he started hiring some people. And, you know, we just continued improving it. 
And one of the things he did to improve it was he changed the name. He changed it to Cumberland Raceway Park in 1987. And that really was symbolic of the changes of this track. He wanted to change everything, change the staff, change how the place was run, and change the name. They started having some bigger races because of all these improvements, and the track continued to succeed through the late 80s and into the early 90s. During this time, one of my dad's friends, Joe Austin, started working at the track, and that's where a lot of these pictures came from. In 1991, Bob sold the track to Jim and Bunny Howe, and they had recently moved from Michigan where they had previously owned and operated a track, so they were not new to this at all. They came in and started improving the track again. They resurfaced it. They did a lot of work building up into the early 90s, you know, really trying to make a name for this place again. And once again, they changed the name from Cumberland Raceway Park to I-40 Dragway. And it got that name because it's visible from I-40. If you're headed eastbound on I-40, going through the Crossville area, you're gonna see this track. I mean, it's right there in your face. So when Jim and Bunny ran this track, that's really when I became familiar with it. As a kid, I went there with my mom and dad. Uh, they had some funny car races, they had pro mod races, quick eight races, lots of cool events that brought people in. And, you know, it really got me going. You know, I like drag cars and hot rods anyways because I was brought up around it. But seeing those cars specifically, seeing Scotty Cannon's 41 Willys Pro Mod, that did it for me. I mean, that was one of the cars that really hooked me. And I got to see it at I-40 Dragway. So it was really neat. So as I got a little bit older, I started going back to the track. It was still under Jim and Bunny Howe's ownership. And at the time, Jim Howe Jr. had developed a race series called the Bounty Race. Now, this was Outlaw Street Cars, and it was wild. It was a crazy series. I mean, it was one, some of the best racing of my lifetime. I mean, I enjoyed going each and every month. I didn't want to miss out on anything because the action was just so unpredictable. So during that time, I was mainly doing still photography, and then my wife, Christina, was doing video from the stands. The house continued running the track until 2015. That's when Jim and Bunny retired, but they're still very involved in drag racing. Their sons, Jim Jr. and Doug Howe, they both drag race all the time, so they're at the track just about every weekend, but they're just not having to work quite as hard. Once again, the ownership change kind of brought the track's future into jeopardy. We didn't really know exactly what was gonna happen. We knew that if somebody was gonna come in there and buy the place, they were obviously gonna have to spend some money and you know we just didn't know what was going to happen but then we got the news that tommy fitzgerald bought the place and he and nick bressaw completely renovated this place i mean they took it down to the bare bones and brought it back up with all brand new materials i mean this place is top of the line it's one of the best eighth mile facilities out there and they spent a ton of money and a ton of time making it a premier track and since then, it's changed hands a few other times. The leaseholders has changed, and now it's run by Michael Newcomb and his family. They're drag racers at heart. They keep coming up with new ideas of getting people involved in this track, too. And part of that is doing Asphalt Wars, which is races in the shutdown area. Uh, there are no prep races, so it's kind of like street racing, except it's legal. And, uh, you know, they do outlaw races. They do heads-up races. They're really trying to keep this track at the forefront 
of drag racing and they're doing a good job with it. They're pushing it out there to the people and they're keeping the track busy year round. And that's what's important with the modern age of drag racing. You gotta keep something cool happening all the time, whether it's special invited races like with the Street Outlaws guys, which they've had Ryan Martin, Jeff Lutz. A lot of those guys have raced there. The Memphis Street Outlaw guys have been there and they've started doing some no prep races and they're actually building up for a quarter million dollar no prep race later on this year. It's gonna be huge. One of the biggest moments of this track's history. They're having weekly bracket races. They're really mixing it up with lots of different activities that keeps the drag racer, the spectator, and even kids entertained. So it's really important that we support these tracks and keep them going because they're putting a lot of money and a lot of effort and a lot of time into this and they need to be able to make a dollar you know this is a business at the end of the day i hope you enjoyed following along with the history of crossville dragway i plan on doing more of these episodes in the backtrack series and i'm going to mix that in with some of my hot rod hoarders episodes and other videos on the channel uh, but for right now this is my starting point on backtrack series so thank you for watching and support your local racetrack